Look at that. Dang it. I had shot myself in the foot there. Hey, welcome to another episode of Chaos Craft. I'm Matt with Schematical, and today we wired in some pathfinding from the native stuff. So now they can choose if they want to do raw output, like just like a human would, forward, backward, side, side, or they can decide they want to use the pathfinding and just say, hey, take me to this block, and then it'll use the same pathfinding you'd see a villager or a zombie use. Uh, it was a little bit of a, a challenge getting that all to work, as you'll see as you've probably already seen a little bit. It was a little bit of a challenge getting that all to work together, but we did it, so that was fun. We're still doing hide and seek, though I did switch it up a little bit last week. At the end, I'm gonna talk a little bit about another project that I'm thinking about playing with. So uh, give me your feedback at the end there and tell me what you, what you like. If you like neural net stuff and Minecraft experiments, trying to learn how to play it and all sorts of various other AI gaming related content, hit that uh, subscribe button, uh, check out other playlists. If you don't know what's going on here, Castcraft v0.3 playlist has a lot of interesting information on it. I'll get you guys caught up. So with that said, here we go. As you can see, we're back to hide and seek. So one of the big problems with it before is that the generations would iterate at the same pace when I first added in rolls. So all the Marios and all the Iron Men would both have to finish training before it would iterate a generation. And so that meant that you could have time where all the Iron Men died because they didn't do well, and the Marios, since they're hiding successfully, were crushing it, they would be left alive on the map with no one to find them. So it was really skewing the scores. And so now the generation should be able to iterate uh, normally. I should have hit this with a hard reset before this thing. We could go back to the building stuff, but I don't know, that was kind of a one-off thing. I do want them to build more stuff. But now, I mean, we actually fixed a lot of problems, so I'm curious now. I, I'd like to see if they wall themselves in or something like that. I also have to delete a cookie because there's a slight bug in the UI that's driving me nuts, but it should be fixed with the next deployment. I'm not sure why I didn't deploy it. Nope, I just logged myself out of Chaos Craft completely. <laughs> well, at least we have pretty colors to look at while I screw around over here. Okay, forgot my password. Nope, just fat fingered my password. I had it right. So this there is dynamic, and so we're going to get rid of a bunch of this stuff because it's not important for their knowledge. They should learn a lot. Wow, look at all the stuff they've observed. So much junk. We don't need any of that stuff. What do we need? Is there entity IDs? We don't need any of that junk. That's all junk. Maybe an item, something like that. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to do Greg and Egg. We're not going to do Dirt at the moment either. Well, they've already learned to match manager block, which is... Oh, wait, that's because these guys haven't been hard reset. We're going to let them see bedrock right now. Okay, so their, their neural nets are going to be extremely limited in a lot of ways. But they keep in mind, they can see the entity is not is their teammate or not their teammate, too. So, Okay, so they're Gen Zeros. They're spawning. So now here's what I want. Is this, this is where I'm headed with this, is I want a smaller map for these guys to work on and i want to have dozens of them because right now even that i'm limiting their spawn quite a bit they spawn too close still and doesn't really make the match that fair i also want to figure out a way to delay these guys spawning in i kind of want to go back another thing i want to do it's literally written right here is i want to give them the ability to switch from raw navigation to the new navigation we've had and and just get rid of the sim model the action sim model so that way they can have the best of both worlds Let's take a look at their neurons real quick. This guy's this guy's navigating pretty well. Oh, oh, was he stopping? He hit a Mario, then he stopped for no reason. And now Mario just ran into his point of view. All right, let's just check out this Mario. Biased input is looking at bedrock. Okay. Wait, what was the output? Walk output. So they're they're totally using run out. Let's walk sideways and change head yaw. We're not going to see too many interesting neural nets Gen Zero. That's unlikely. I just want to see a variety of neurons, ideally. Okay, he's got is looking at bedrock, is looking at org entity, biased input is looking at bedrock, is looking at bedrock, is looking at bedrock. Jump, walk sideways, walk forwards, change yaw, and target candidate slot. <laughs> this is an odd one, but I need to make a neuron that says it's looking at target candidate slot one. 
with an I or slot two. So that would be a good neuron to have. What's the difference between target and target candidate? So they have multiple target slots, right? And when we're doing it, when we're doing action buffer stuff, they have action target slots too. So let's take a look at the biology here. They've got eyes and you can see they have two target slots. So a target candidate is something in its environment it's assessing. It's, you know, the block, if you guys remember, if you go back a couple videos, you can see the kind of spread around them of blocks like that they kind of examine. So all those are target candidates and then any, any entity within range as well. And I can't remember what the range is offhand, 10, 20 maybe. So we're at Gen Zero still. We're seeing some good neurons. Um, we're not going to see the scores yet. I, I created a match manager block. Look at that. And I made a nice little M skin for it instead of just something random like purple. But this, if I place it here, will allow you to create different matches. And then you can set the match duration and probably a lot of other things. But that way, it'll control, it'll make sure that these guys spawn in unison, basically. Or maybe I can figure out a way to put like a roll delay or something like that. You guys can pass it. But they'll basically spawn in unison. So that way, they we can have the hiders and the seekers start out at the same time. Because right now, you're at a disadvantage if you spawn out in this main area here and you're a hider. But I'm curious to see what their scores are going to be. Start observing. So now, also, I should note that the spawn blocks... I'm stuck in this guy. Get out. I need to make it so there's just one key and it stops observing. This also can take a, uh, I should say, match uh, ID here. And so, wow, this is this screen is just all jacked up. <laughs> uh, but it, this is the, the match thing. So if it has a match, then a match block, then that should be what commands it. So I also want to work on a clone space command because I'd like the clone area command, because I want these guys to, I want to be able to clone like a smaller version of this where they can hide, because this is a little excessive right now. I think I'm going to let these guys run for a gen or two, see what happens. What are we at for gen progress? Network info, 29%. And we're going a little slower because I dropped down their numbers. Let's take another look, see if anybody's got better neurons. Okay, so this is what I was looking for, the entity team ally state, ally spelled wrong opponent. So they can determine what an opponent is, so that's good. This guy looks like he's using the raw navigation. Or not raw navigation, this guy looks like he's doing, using uh, Minecraft navigation. So that means he's actually performing an action right now. But he died. Yeah, these guys are, okay, so this is interesting. They're using the pathfinding I wired in for Minecraft. So they've got the mob pathfinding. So what I want to do is train these guys to be... Train a variety of neural nets to be good at very specific tasks and then take another neural net that'll choose which tasks to perform at that given time as a higher functioning neural net. And then we can pass in the other neural nets as just basically they fire off whenever this output says fire off. And I'm trying to figure out a good way to structure that. So to code right now or not to code? The match stuff will take a long time. I could do the raw output stuff though. Another thing I could do is offset their scans. So they have the ability to scan further away from them. You can actually see this guy was just targeting some air blocks and still deciding to walk away from them. That made absolutely no difference to him. But the guys that made Don't Starve Together, they made another game called Oxygen Not Included. And that's another one I would like to put AI in. Let's see if anyone's iterated yet. Doesn't look like it. No, oh, wait. Okay, so the gorilla, which I should probably put their roles in here of iterated. Let's hop back to this for a second and take a look at my species. I don't know if you guys saw, but I deployed this fancy new table thing here. So I can say I want my seekers first. And so these guys, 40 out of 40. So these, see the seekers, they're not doing well. But the thing is, we shouldn't run out of all the seekers. There should never be zero seekers in there, or at least not for more than like five seconds. So the gorillas, they've already iterated. So they're doing all right. And it's kind of a pretty high score there. Well, look at the discrepancy in complexity here. These guys are 26s already, and these guys are just 8. And the tw and the 8s got more points. Yeah, so that guy's definitely doing the uh, wander. He's doing something from the action buffer that looks so much like um, he's trying to navigate to the block below him or something. So we've got all the seekers hiding in this corner here. This guy, this guy's freaking out. Oh, oh, he's... Is there a hider over here? There's a hider. There's a hider stuck in there. So they may have actually been tracking him. It's tough to say. 
but they clearly aren't doing a great job of it because they've gotten stuck in this corner. Let's add in a neuron or two. Let's start with the one I've been saying I'm going to add since the beginning of time is a use raw output neuron. Wow, okay, it's running right out of the box. And he is spewing forth. It just looks gross at this point. I think I dropped the particles for these guys and then increased the particles for Billy. And now we've just, we've got particles galore. So the green lines, if you're new to this, is uh, are what the, at the edges of what they can see. And there's also a range to it as well. I think I cut down the range a little bit. So you can, I, I didn't actually make the green lines as long as they can see because then there'd be a ton of green lines everywhere. Is, is there at least is there one guy? There's a, okay, there's a bunch of them. They're Gen 2. Don't know how they got stacked like that. That's a little, okay. They're all stacking. I think there's a prop. There's got to be a bug. Yep, one of them walked. Didn't they? No, they might have just gotten pushed. U-R-O-N, okay. He's got it, but he's too, it's, it's below whatever. So theoretically, they're on the server side. They should be performing a, a wander action right now. So if I put a breakpoint in the wander action, you know what? I may have messed up. Let me take a look at the delete me folder again. Shoot side equals. Okay, so I need to change the, I need to change the execute side. That's on me. I forgot. Yes, it hit. I don't have a mouse. Give me back my mouse. All right, so one of them, all right, this is good. So one of them should move, and we have a wander action, oddly enough. Okay, there we go, we got our wanderer. So this one, ideally, well, you might not score that high now I think about it. That's not good. <laughs> and then he went into wander mode. I mean, he might have just been wandering, I'm not sure. Oh, this guy got green lines sticking out of him. That's his target. That's his, okay, so it's actually a couple of them, and that's their target. All right, we're going to change that to blue, because that's going to confuse the heck out of me. So just to tell you guys what's going on there, that gr the green line sticking out of Mario there, that's because they're actually using, they've selected um, an action to do, and that's the target he wants. But I already have green lines in here, so we need to make that something, some other color. And I need to remember where the heck I put that code. When I first, oh my god. This is, this is ridiculous. You guys lucked out. I'm going to pause right here for a second and say I wired it in so the they were, for debug purposes, I had them track the beehive because we weren't quite sure if they were tracking or not. So I wanted to say, okay, find the closest one. So here's what happened when I forced them to track the beehive for a little bit. Okay. I've done something really weird here. Something's off. Minecraft. Neural Nets, learn to dance in unison. Confusing the heck out of me. So they have path to the beehive. Well, we're going to try this again. Let's go, wait, that. God bless it. <laughs> I killed myself. Okay. That was fun. That didn't work out at all. What I learned today is that Minecraft path finding isn't the best. Look at these guys. Maybe they're working their way over here. Have they figured it out? Interesting patterns. It's, they've made a cross. I mean, part of the cross was already there. Parkour stuff is just out of control, though. You guys see that off in the distance there? That's our parkour thing. It took a human, the, the human that built it, it took him, I don't know, an hour to, <laughs> to beat it, maybe? One of them made it to the center of this thing. And a couple of them are colliding with each other and struggling to navigate. We're going to see how well they navigate upwards because that's going to be key in longer terms. So we're going to go and put some dirt in there. I could just move them to King of the Hill maze over there, but I make it easy for myself, right? Maybe I should have kept that found in there. Okay, up, 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 up. They found it. I have no idea how to get to it. So how do villagers path up? Like, how do zombies path up after you? That's what we got to figure out. Okay, let's test something real quick. All right, let's try this. Let's see if these zombies can get to me. I mean, they should be able to without any difficulty. Can you please spawn a zombie or two? So I'm going to go and turn myself back into... Oh, for God's sakes. Oh, they're going to attack them first. <sighs> We're going to go over here. 
all those guys are probably going to die. We're going to set the daytime to night. But these guys should be able to make it to the top of this corner without any effort, really. Look at that. Look at him just hop up there. He just... What the heck? He's in lava. All right. Game mode. Survival. Nope. Survival. All right, so look at him. This is the type of navigation I'm looking for. So I got to go in there and strip this out now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got no problem getting to me. Oh, God. He got me in lava. He can't hurt me, but he got me in lava. I wonder if I'm, am I setting jump to false somehow? Did I overwrite the jump? I, you know what? Oh, my God. Please tell me I didn't overwrite the jump. I might have overwritten the jump. So I did override the jump at one point. I think that's because they managed to jump into the sky. Let's see what happens if I take that out. All right. Look at that. Dang it. I had shot myself in the foot there. Now they're playing King of the Hill again. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. You see this? They're climbing. I overrode the jump function a long time ago because they literally learned to fly by spamming the jump. And so I had to overwrite that. This is a huge improvement in our navigation. You can climb. I'm not sure if we want to keep doing the uh, hide and seek now or if we want to do something else. Cool. So that's what happened this week. Actually, it was last week, but somehow I got a week behind on my videos. Doesn't matter. I'm catching up right now. The next project I'm thinking about working on is related to a chat bot and also deep faking some voices, which are pretty cool. So I can finally get my celebrity narrators to narrate my favorite blog posts into podcasts for myself so I can listen to Anthony Hopkins tell me about whatever white paper I feel like digesting that day. So that's kind of a fun thing I'm toying with. Leave a comment if you are interested in that project or leave a comment if you'd rather I do something else more specifically related to Minecraft. I'm eager to hear your feedback. With that said, if you're interested in becoming a patron, check it out, patreon.com slash schematical. Uh, but other than that, have a great week and I will see you later. Thanks. All right, don't blow up. Everybody cross your fingers. Don't. Ah. <laughs> uh...